God wants you to have a better life. I believe as we choose, we can have a better life. The better life that God wants you to have is paid with miracles. This is The Place for Miracles. Praise God and welcome to our program, The Place for Miracles. Lindsay and I give you all of our prayers and all of our faith today, believing God for miracles in your life. And happy Thanksgiving. This is Thanksgiving week, Lindsay, and we give thanks unto God for our nation. Yes. We pray over our nation today. Yes. And we yes. believe God for miracles and pray that you are having a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving week. Lindsay, uh, Emma is in South Carolina experiencing severe pain in her back, her neck, and her head. But after we prayed, she said the pain is completely gone and she has it no more. Thank and you, she Lord. Is thanking God. Mona up in Virginia Beach called for her brother in law. The doctors believe that it was liver sclerosis, sclerosis of the liver. But uh, they called in for prayer. We went to prayer. Now suddenly the lab's results show that there is no liver cirrhosis. Thank the Lord. And so they're praising God for that miracle as well. Uh, Patty was watching you and me on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, mm. received healing uh, in the left eardrum when we were praying. Praise the Lord. Believing God for that. And uh, James out in California says, my wife was having symptoms like a stroke. Oh my. We took her to the emergency room, emergency room claiming two scriptures. Thank you for your prayer. We call the Abundant Life Prayer Group. And she's back home, no evidence now of a stroke or any other damage. And she's praising Thank God. So God. is Praise her husband. The Lord. If you have a healing testimony, let me know. Call the prayer group at 918 495 7777 or go online oralroberts.com. Uh, Lindsay is wearing a very special necklace today, which I want her to explain in a minute. If you saw our program last week, you know that our trip to Cameroon is being delayed. Uh, because I tested positive for COVID a couple of days before I was to fly. So I wasn't really having any symptoms, but I had to self quarantine and we had no to postpone the trip. No symptoms and he did fine. Thank you, Jesus. He went right through it. Praise the Lord and, and hallelujah. And I was with him and I tested negative. And so I, <laughs> God only knows, but the important thing is we're all fine. Praise well, the Lord. Uh, you Thank know, you, Lord. Uh, my, Praise the Lord. My Vice President Mike Bernard travels with me all over the world. And he had gone ahead of me to Cameroon yeah. and was planning a trip on up into Niger when we had a crusade, my beautiful necklace. we had a crusade uh, some years ago, and that's where that's where the Lord moved on Jordan to begin what we called in those days "Hunger Needs a Voice," her food outreach, and that that produced the a vision for a new Christian school. school. And you're seeing some of the video of it now. And they had the dedication of this magnificent school with how many? 360? 362 students. students in that it. is amazing, considering and all things. There's more video coming because he just got home a couple of days ago uh, from Niger and uh, more video coming. But I want you to explain that, Lindsay. Well, let, let's set the stage. It's, it's many, many years beautiful. ago when I was not having children and I had lost a son and I had had miscarriages and I had had surgery and on and on and on. Went to Nigeria to be with you. You had already gone ahead. I was supposed to be home with a baby that went on to heaven. And that many years ago, I was absolutely broken. I felt the Lord tell me, get up and go to Nigeria, where Richard already was on his way. So I got up. I had to have shots. I had to have all the things that went with it. I got on an airplane. I joined you in their precious Benson Itahosa, Archbishop Itahosa and his wonderful wife, Margaret, and their fabulous family began to minister to me and told me to expect a miracle and to believe God for children. Out of that trip, them laying hands on me, them praying for me, and a family named the Child's Family in Nigeria, laying hands on me, praying, believing. Next thing I know, I have my beautiful Jordan. Now, skip ahead many years. Jordan goes with the Child's Family children, son and daughter-in-law, 
second generation being Neil, Jordan. Well, Neil and and your dad would be Jordan's third generation. Neil and Danette is the offspring of the ones that prayed for me in Nigeria. Now they're in Niger. You and Jordan have a crusade in Niger. And Jordan was uh, doing what Jordan loved to do, bringing food into the countries and having the feeding program for the, the unique, unique hunger needs a voice that was there. Now, out of that, all these years later, out springs her heart's desire of having a school. So they started a school, they went through the government and did everything they could to get all the hoops and the hurdles jumped We've over. We've been helping to fund all that. And now, now the dedication was just recently, and we'll get you the footage, we're getting it all together. And in that, uh, out of the dedication, they gave me this. Yeah. They had this for me, and that was my, that was just, yeah, I'm glad you're wearing it take today. over. <laughs> I'm glad take you're over. wearing it today. Um, <laughs> just to think generationally, the Itahosas going into the Roberts, the Roberts coming with the child's family, and all the generational expectations to get to the point of 362 children learning the gospel and the standards are excellent their scores are very academic through the roof it's acad it's known for its academic excellence and you know generations of faith believing God for miracles and that's what this represents I, I remember I remember when Ron and Jerry mm -hmm. Childs who were missionaries under mm -hmm. Benson Itahosa, when they all prayed for you, yep. when we all you were having mis miscarriages and bearing a son, mm -hmm. and how Jordan and then Olivia and mm -hmm. Chloe mm -hmm. came along into our lives. And uh, Brother Ron uh, would have been in his 80s. He went home to be with the Lord mm -hmm. earlier this year. Yep. Jerry's still living. Yes. And uh, was there at the dedication. Yes, and all so. these years later, my daughter that It's okay. <laughs> Realistically, had no earthly way of being born. Was the one that had that idea. Wahoo. You know, you may never know what your seed will do, what your dollar here and thousand dollar there, twenty dollars here, five dollars there. You may never know. You may never know what your prayers will do for somebody. When I went to the Idahoses, I said, I give up, I quit. Yeah. I'm done, I'm finished. Well, you actually said to me, don't ever ask me to get pregnant again. And You'd had miscarriage after miscarriage and then a dead son. And Margaret came and to me and said, come her? here. And they all began to lay hands on me. She said, do me a favor, believe God one more time. Out of that is Jordan, out of Jordan comes all of the missionary works. I don't even know what countries she's been Amen. in. She called me one time and said, hey, mom, Timbuktu is a real place. I said, what do you mean? She said, I'm there. I'm just shortly out, I, a few miles from it. I said, you're not supposed to be there. Yeah, she said, in a perfect world, I'm not. But we got diverted and the rest of the story is history. There is and a real now, Timbuktu. It's in yeah. the nation of Mali, which yeah. is just over from She wasn't here. scheduled to be there. And now all these years <laughs> later, there, there is the blessing that represents generations of faith yeah, and Jordan, believing God. Jordan was followed by Catherine Olivia and then followed by Chloe and And all these daughters. generations of faith coming up. You never know what your prayers will do. You never know what your seed will do. You never know what one seed faith gift. You may have sown into that school. You may have sown into the, the feeding program. You may have sown In, into India. India. You may have sown into us going into back then. Back it was, to Cameroon now, for, and it, it, soon. For me, it was Nigeria, but with Jordan and you, it was Niger. It was the offshoot of that. I mean, let's think about this. God is still God, and he's still doing miracles. Niger is where the president of the nation asked me to go to his residence and lay hands on his wife and pray. She had had a stroke. Yep. And I went to the presidential residence when I was there yep. and went into the president's bedroom yep. where his wife was in bed after having a stroke and, and laid my hands on her and prayed for healing, prayed for the, the president's daughter as well. God has opened so many nations uh, uh, to us over these years. And I thank God and I thank God for your support and for your prayers. And speaking of Jordan, Speaking of Jordan. She's coming to sing. But, Praise the but Lord. After she sings, Lindsay has received another dream, a prophetic dream. And when Lindsay mm -hmm. dreams a prophetic dream and when she shares it on television or uh, on Facebook or on YouTube, so many thousands of people watch, you won't want to miss this prophetic dream. So stay tuned. And here is Jordan to sing. to know. 
Lindsay's newest version of Read and Pray and Then Obey, Volume 2, is your 31-day devotional for your healing and wholeness. Throughout his entire ministry, Jesus healed people, taking from them the burden of illness and giving them life and strength. These devotionals are designed to give you hope and release your faith in the power of the living Word of God. Go online to oralroberts.com to order your copy of Read and Pray and Then Obey, Volume 2 by Lindsay Roberts. Yours for any Seed Faith gift. If you haven't yet joined the Greater Works India Outreach, call today, 1-844-828-1412. Or go to oralroberts.com and hit the orange Donate Now button. And what a wonderful time, Lindsay, on Thanksgiving week to be a part of what's happening in India by calling that number, 844-828-1412, and being a part of the Greater Works Outreach in India. Thank God for it, And Lindsay. can I say on that, of all weeks, Thanksgiving week, yeah. thank you, thank you, thank Praise you to God. our partners. You know, and may God bless it back. Yes, when we opened this program, I, I got so emotional, I was such a big crybaby, I apologize, but I don't want to ever stop and... Don't ever apologize for crying. Thank you. I never <laughs> want to act like I don't appreciate our partners. Thank you, thank you from the bottom Amen. of our heart because all of that is because of our partners and because of God. And God works through people and if you've been our partner doing that or if you'd like to join us as partners and, and continue on what we've been doing, 
my thanks to you, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all you do to help us in this ministry. Praise God. And that number once again is 844-828-1412. Now, a few nights ago, Lindsay had another prophetic dream. She shared True. it a few days ago on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Thousands and thousands of people have already heard about it, but I wanted you to share it on the program, Lindsay. Okay. So let, let the people know what God has shown you again prophetically. So um, let me get to the first of it. I'll show you the billboards quickly, or I'll tell you about them, and then I'll, I'll get to what the Lord showed me in the message. I know it's, you know, I say message Bible, some, it's a translation, and, and I understand that, but sometimes the way the message Bible is written, it's very direct, and it was very clear and it, it just seemed to really clarify what the Lord was saying. And I think that's why the Lord kind of directed me to read that. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. When I fell asleep, um, I was sound asleep, very out cold sound asleep, to be honest with you. And all of a sudden I woke up, only I wasn't awake. I, I was like I was awake in the dream. Mm -hmm. And I saw billboards again and I knew the Lord was speaking and, to me. And He always speaks to her through billboards. Through billboards. And the reason why I think, and I kept saying, why Lord, why billboards? And billboards get your attention. So right. I think that's why the Lord was telling me that. So here I am and passing these billboards. The first one said, blow the trumpet in Zion. The next one said, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Now you have to understand, I knew that. I knew that was Joel, the book of Joel. I knew the song, uh, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Now up till this point, every one of the prophetic dreams that were like that, particularly on billboards, were very encouraging and uplifting and, and oh, wahoo, and oh, praise the Lord. And I thought, okay, what is this going to be? Because I love the encouraging words and I want to encourage people with the word of the Lord, with the prophetic words. But I knew that blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm was not necessarily, um, woohoo. It was more, um, like a, a warning. like a warning, exactly. But the truth of the matter is the Lord really ministered to me after all this happened and I'll continue, but the Lord ministered to me, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. One translation says, whom the Lord loves, he redirects. And I heard a commentary on this. He redirects as if to avoid a train wreck. God does not want us in the middle of a mess. God wants us to ever so importantly redirect us to get on the right path. So I saw God was giving us a warning. And this was for the people of God, hallelujah, for the people that were the enemies of God, this was a warning. And I saw two mountains. On one mountain, it was totally green, total vegetation, just as plush and lush. And it was like, woo, you know, the hills are alive type, wow, mountain. And the people on that mountain were sounding a trumpet, blow the trumpet in now, Zion. Now those were the people of God. They were the people of God. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain and on the holy mountain of God. The trumpet was sounding and it was all just so plush and they were turned to the other mountain that was gravelly and dark and it was, um, what's the word I desolate. want to say? Desolate, that's a perfect word. And on the two mountains, there were two signs. One that said, God blesses his people on the plush, amazing mountainside, God blesses his people. And on the other one, the desolate one, the, the one that had gravelly, kind of no vegetation, God judges his enemies. Now that is straight out of Blow the Trumpet in Zion mm -hmm. of Joel the 2. The next billboard said, um, it wasn't, it's hard to say it because it said it, but I saw it more like animated. It was a coin flipping up in the air like this. And on one side, God judges his enemies. On the other side of the coin flipping up, God blesses his people. So I got the message. The next two billboards in sync said, choose this day whom you will serve, Okay, that was getting pretty direct. Then the next one came up and said, I love this, see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And we as Christians have a Bible right to show and demonstrate, uh, demonstrate and see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Now I began to think about that. Who are the enemies of God? Well, I know some enemies that are enemies of God that are enemies to me that are uh, obnoxious to our family, to our ministry. It was even generational like to Oral and then passed on to Richard mm -hmm. and me and that same, that same coming against us, that same vicious vileness has passed into being attacked on, on our children. And so I know that sometimes the enemies of God can actually come in the human form of people who act like your enemies or my enemies. And I don't believe God was saying, I'm coming after your enemies like that, but I believe God was saying judgment day 
where God is going to have to make a decision. God has to show righteousness. And if you think about the scales of justice, um, and, and that's one of the first thing I learned, I'll see if I can do it. When I was in law school, there was the blindfold on the, what appeared to be lady, um, on justice, so to speak, and two sides of like a tray on each side. And they were equally balanced. Scales. It was the scales of justice. And God balances the scales of justice. And they're supposed to be blindfolded in that they're not biased. This is the way it is. It goes according to the rules, according to the rule of law. The rule of law is the book of the Bible for me, for, for Christians to go by in a sense. It's their, it's their guidebook, can I say that? In the Bible, there are laws of God. There's the laws of faith, the laws of prosperity. These are God's laws. And God is not going to change his mind. I'm the Lord, I change not. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is not a man that he should lie. So God can't change the rules. And if all of a sudden, oh, you're so cute and I like you so much, so okay, you can get away with it. It's not the way it is. The Bible is the Bible. The rules are the rules. God is God. And if all of a sudden, let's think about this in traffic. If all of a sudden, oh, red light means this and red light means that, and suddenly a red light means green light, and it all, it's all the same because you're driving a cute car and you have, you have cute kids, so, oh, the rules don't apply. What are you going to have? You're going to have a mess. You're going to have what I would consider to be confusion that could even lead into a collision that could even go as far as something as, as horrible as death. God has rules to follow, not to bind you, like put you in jail, but to keep you protected. Not to take you out, but to keep you in. Exactly. And so when God sets up a standard, it's not for you to say, oh, well, everybody gets everything in there. You know, it, we're all included. No, the rules are the rules. And, and so in thinking of that, I was like, God, you know, for generations, this one person has attacked I, and you just seem to let it go. And that was on my mind when I'm seeing all this. And God was saying to me, he's a just God. The Bible says, he, it doesn't say he never angers, but it says he's slow to anger. God has to make righteous, righteous, and justice, justice. Now in the middle of it, God was showing me that the people, God's people who are blessed can blow the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm as if to say, I'm sorry to say it this way. I kind of don't know what other way. You know, remember the old TV show, Danger Will Rogers, Danger Will Rogers, warning the people who continually, not, oh, I goofed up or no, I, you know, I missed God. I didn't go to church. So I'm not meaning that. But people who are actually enemies of God that come against God's people, mm -hmm. that come against God's and work. And they're out there. We're not to make the decision of God, go get them. God will take care of that. God blesses his people and judges his enemies. But in addition to blessing his people, what he was showing me was as we blow the trump trumpet, as we are the goodness of God in the land of the living, we are a living witness for those who are not in the kingdom, those who are enemies of God to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Why? So that they come into the kingdom. Now, when she woke up the next morning, um I went and got her a cup of coffee and she sat up in bed and was telling me about this dream. You, you said something else you haven't mentioned so far. Okay. I don't want you to leave I have, I have page after well, page well, you after said page. Not everybody gets a trophy. Okay, so you know how it is, you know, when you have a participation trophy and the whole team gets a trophy, I love that. I loved it when my kids played soccer and everybody got a trophy because they were on the team. I love that. But there's also consequences. If somebody on that team made a decision to play dirty, to cheat, to go against the rules and then declare themselves as the winner, that's not how it works. You can't just declare yourself an enemy of God and think you're going to end up in heaven, get the blessing of God and get all the goodness of God in the land of the living. It doesn't work that yeah, I way. I wanted you to share this. Thank you. And so what was happening was I began to think of these scriptures and these are what I wrote down. Every good and perfect gift comes from above. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy endure. He is good and his mercies endure forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. God is righteous and he is, you know what? I'm going to put these up too. I'll, I'll put them on our website. I've got so many of these. Good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. This was all going through my head and I was writing them as fast as I could. But I got this. I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And then again, I felt like going to the message Bible, or message translation, however you want it. I, I realize that some have a problem. It's not a King James version, okay, but I call it a Bible because it's the word of God. And it says this, 
I'm sure now that I'll see the goodness in the exuberant earth. Stay with God, take heart. Don't quit, I'll say it again, stay with God. Now in that, I wanna read the rest of what, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. I'm this just gonna read in, you a little bit of in this. In the book of Jeremiah. In Jer no, it's Joel, Joel, Joel 2. I beg your pardon, Joel, Joel 2. And it said this, look at the size of that army and the strength of those who obey him. And then it said, God God's day of judgment, the great and the terrible. Yeah, for the people who are enemies of God and refuse to turn to God and refuse to stop destroying God's people, God has to deal with them in judgment. Unless they change. Unless they repent and change. Simple. How do you do that? I repent, Lord. It's that simple. But then he said, look at the strength of those who obey him. There's also this. It's not too late. God's personal message. Come back to me. And I really mean it. Come back, you're fasting, you're weeping, sorry for your sins, change your life, not just your clothes. Come back to your God and here's why. God is kind, God is merciful, he takes a deep breath, he puts up with a lot, he is the most patient God, extravagant love. And he said, maybe all, is, when all is said and done, the blessings are full and robust from your God. Now listen to this. Fear not earth, be glad, God has done great things. Now listen to this part, trees are bearing fruit again. You know, we're all listening to the doom and gloom and devastation and how this became that and COVID-19 became 20 and 21. Now listen to what this says. Fear not, the fields and the meadows are greening up. It's a bumper crop, children of Zion celebrate. Richard, it's time for the people of God to realize God blesses his people. He has to deal with his enemies. He will deal with the enemies of God. God judges the enemies of God, but for God's people, he said, I'll make up for the years the locust has eaten. And, and not, if that's not rejoicing, I don't know what is. And not to hide out, Lindsay, but stand up and be proud. I'm a Christian. Let I love God with glad. all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then the tip of the ice is, is this one, because it ends with this. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will, your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And it ends with this. He said, there will be a great rescue, says God. God. It is time for us to believe that God is God. Let God arise and enemies scatter. God will deal with the enemies of God. Just stand there, be the goodness of God in the land of the living. Be your witness self for the good and the glory of God. And God will take care of the rest. But while he is taking care of the judgment of your enemies, he is going to bless his people. Hallelujah. I believe that with all of Hallelujah. my heart. Somebody give praise to the Lord praise today. Praise the Lord. What a great, great message. Praise the Lord. For That's what I believe. Week. I am giving thanks to God in the land of the living. And I pray you receive every word of it. And if you'd like to hear, uh, like to hear that again, go online uh, to oralroberts.com, go to our YouTube channel, or go to our Facebook page, and you can hear the entire word because there's some things you. Didn't and I'll put up my notes as fast as I can. And if you didn't, if you've not had an opportunity yet to order Lindsay's new book, Read, Pray, and Then Obey, Volume Two, here's your opportunity for any seed gift this month. I will send it to you. I pray and believe it'll be a blessing in your life. Uh, Lindsay, I didn't give you enough time to give all that out, but it's, oh, it's all the time so we have more. today. Go to YouTube or I got Facebook. about six seconds left. God bless you. We'll see you next time right here from the place for Happy miracles. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.